Hello my soccer universe to this preview of the 23-24 Premier League season. Yes, it is upon us. Uh, full disclosure about the timing, I'm shooting this right after Arsenal had beaten Manchester City in penalties in the Community Shield. Game that I haven't seen very much, I just read the result because it's still a preseason game and it will probably not tell us much about these two teams. So what I'm gonna do in uh, this video, I actually wanna just recap a little bit about the transfer summer uh, caveat right up front. Yes, it's the only thing we can talk about in the summer are the transfers that keeps everyone excited. Honestly, it may not have as much bearing as one would think uh, for the entire season. I think there's still, you know, the structure of the teams mostly still intact in in in, in a way. So I always think transfers are very often overrated it just gets us excited and that's what it's all uh, about in that sense but it's probably interesting to look into what has been happening uh, i also want to give you a little bit of a feeling how i think things are going although at this moment it is hard to tell and of course we look at the model and the first set of fixtures uh for this premier league season so yeah transfers i mean the first thing that has 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 to say i mean um there were a few teams that got the stuff done early. I'm looking here at Liverpool with sign of McAllister and then Soboslai, for instance. Uh, Chelsea got rid of a whole other chunk of players, which they needed to do. Thankfully, they saw the Arabia that is now taking in all the players that they need. Kovacic, of course, going to Manchester City might be one that could be interesting uh, going forward. And also, you know, one of my favorite teams, Milan, also relieved Chelsea of a few players. So that made the whole signing process a little bit easier for them, or the whole squad building process, because they really needed to shed players with Maurizio Pochettino coming in. I think it's an interesting appointment, um, but I think it still will take time. Um, I still don't quite think that Chelsea will make a top four push, but that squad now has at least potential. The only thing I'm wondering, why do they keep picking on Brighton? But, you know, that's a whole different uh, part. I already mentioned Arsenal. Uh, they were the big spenders of this transfer uh, window. First off, getting Kai Havertz, which is kind of the WTF transfer, especially since you know that Chelsea was selling. Why did you spend 80 on him? I think he's a very talented player that we didn't get to see the best of at Chelsea. But well, still, um, I think has most people a little bit of, uh, scratching their heads. But, you know, I want to see uh, how it's working out. And then, of course, uh, Declan Rice coming from West Ham, which might be the crowning signing for this Arsenal squad. The one thing that I take from all the signings that I've talked so, so far is that in the Premier League, we are at a point now where you, if you stand still, you're falling back. You just have to keep on moving, you have to keep on spending, and this is what we're seeing. We also saw a crazy transfer that hurt me on, 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 on still a lot with Sandro Tonali joining Newcastle. Um, I want to see how Sandro Tonali will be performing in the Premier League. Uh, if you give him time, I think Newcastle is also building an excellent team there, uh, getting more power in the middle of the park. However, then we have to look at the two Manchester teams United. Um, Kind of a little bit, you know, getting Mason Mount in. Yeah, okay, we need a striker. They got now Rasmus Hoyland. But I think they made one um, potentially game-changing signing in Andre Onana. A goalkeeper that Ten Hag knows well. And I think this is a signing that actually will push them forward quite some. And then Manchester City. Yes, you lost Gundogan uh, and Riyad Mahrez. So Saudi Arabia and kind of a few other uh, players. But you got... Uh, <laughs> incredible depth in defense now with signing of Josko Guardiol. I think this Mateo Kovacic guy, he's making quite a career. And from a guy that was born here in my hometown, uh, going to Inter, going to Real Madrid, going to Chelsea, now Manchester City, that's quite a career. Uh, has, has to be said, he might actually do something for them as well. Although we know all, already that Pep signings usually take a while. Um, that means now from the top teams, I mean, I have to, let's go Spurs uh, for that one for, uh, next. For To me, I think they made a great signing, a coach with uh, Ange Postecoglou. Um, it's still, I think Harry Kane is up in the air. It is about to, either he goes to Bayern or he stays another season. 
I think if he stays, I would expect a little bit more from Spurs. However, maybe let's see how Ange Postecoglou uh, will revamp Spurs. It might actually not the worst for Spurs if they get rid of Harry Hurricane now, cash in and really start a good rebuild and, you know, give it a season or two, honestly. And if you play excitingly, the more power to you. And then there are two teams that are in Europe with Brighton and Aston Villa. Um, I, it's very hard to call them. I think Aston Villa made um, a pretty uh, cool signing in Musa Diaby. Uh, Brighton, I think their recruitment is always excellent. And you see, they give uh, many of their players are in demand. Uh, we have also the Zerbi is becoming an in demand coach. I don't think we will see Brighton really fall off right now, however. I'm also not sure if they can, uh, both of these teams can really re re repeat it, although, you know, Aina Emery is a great coach. Um, I also think, also think that, you know, from the lower teams that Iraola uh, was a great signing for Bournemouth, kind of totally under the radar, but this is the guy who had Rayo performing really high. If he's given the time, look out for Bournemouth as well. And then you have also the WTF signing on the, on the bench uh, with Roy Hodgson returning to Crystal Palace, which just seems to be taking a few steps back. Um, I honestly, I don't think I'm well enough equipped to tell you about where I see the relegation battle going, but I could see a tight one. I would expect good things from Burnley to to us. I think they are, they are my, my pick of the promoted teams to also stay up. I don't think we will see all three staying up. Uh, Luton seems like it's just a step too far for them. As great as the stories and as great as we will love this stadium at first, blah, 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 blah. Um, it's not Premier League. It also has to be clearly said, and I really don't know what to say about Sheffield United, but you know, I actually think that Burnley will probably stay in, and that means then who will go down, and yeah, it's the usual South suspect, I don't know what uh, Forest have been doing, I don't know what, um, uh, you know, Everton is always kind of a so-and-so team as of late, although I really would like to see them uh, get us... Um, you know, solid season in there to not really get into relegation trouble. It was a look at Wolves, and I don't know about Palace. On the, on the, on the, honestly, those are teams where I have kind of feeling it could be a little bit tight. A team that also could be drawn into this is actually West Ham, I feel, uh, because they didn't have make any signings, and despite them renewing David Moyes, there seems to be no backing, and now they have the Declan Rice money. Why not normal spending? I know the transfer window is still open, still time time to go and it's really hard now to make this video when this is not not done it's another thing i think we actually should the transfer window should shut on the 31st of july keep it open uh, you know uh first of june of whatever mid 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 june third third first so of, of july the teams can get ready i think it would make a whole lot more sense if you were to ask me but no one is asking me on that regard I think that up top things will be rel rel relatively clear. I think City are still the class of the league. Maybe Arsenal could push them. I would wish surely for that. I think also Liverpool will make a slight bounce back, although I'm not quite convinced they will be go up, up there. Also see a little bit improvement for Chelsea, but you know, you cannot get, get worse than past season. But I think it's still very much City's league to lose. But where it will get really, really exciting is for the top four spots. Because now it's not only the top six. We have Newcastle joining. We had Brighton joining. We had Aston Villa joining that uh, race as well. And who knows about Brentford or, you know, any of these other teams, Fulham, that could actually throw in there. And I have not mentioned Brentford and Fulham so far, who are kind of, you know, a little bit... Um, hipsters teams in in a way I actually would love to see Brentford uh, make a push for Europe as well so with all that preamble of what are my thoughts on to the new season let's see what my model is saying and I took now these um, the ratings I lost the SPI rating for 538 I don't not doing it anymore so I'm only using the club ELO rating and I'm using the odds preseason odds uh, aggregate of a whole host of bookmakers 
to determine the strength of the teams and we'll see kind of what I said you see Manchester City very very clear favorite up top yes I can see that the ratings are really really high because they won after all the travel and Arsenal was a little little bit falling away even being caught by Liverpool who had a, a good start uh, and to the season I honestly don't think it's as close between Arsenal and Liverpool I think Arsenal should be a clear second spot but I think uh, Liverpool United and Newcastle that could be an interesting fight for sure. You also see that the table only sh shows us five European spots. Why that? Well, one will go to the FA Cup winner. That's the, uh, the second uh, Europa League uh, group stage spot. But the League Cup winner will now get the Conference League spot, which I think is interesting. Of course, it's one of the uh, teams that have qualified already for Europe. Then it will go down to the league. So it still might be up to seven. Never forget, it's eight teams this time around. On the bottom, we see that Bournemouth, Sheffield and Luton at the moment, the model is saying, as I said, Bournemouth, I actually have a feeling this, this might be a surprise team. Um, and you also see that, um, um, you know, Fulham, Everton, Wolves, Burnley kind of close together, but getting to the 40 points for now. But this is just averaged over a total of 10,000 simulations. There's a whole range of varieties in there. Realistically, you could say that with Crystal Palace of Fulham is kind of where the relegation zone starts. And I would argue for the top six, we have to look Aston Villa upwards. So from ninth to first in a way. That's what the model is saying. Here are the first two rounds. It starts actually with a very interesting with Burnley and Manchester City at Turf Moor. I think that's a uh, cool one. There are two more that I actually uh, stick out a little bit. I think Newcastle against Aston Villa. That's a very, very interesting one. Aston Villa, of course, with Newcrest. And then a uh, really a big name fixture with Chelsea against Liverpool. I think that will get us started. Um, I'm not sure if I like such big fixtures at the beginning of the season because um, it doesn't tell us much. But then on the other side, I heard this too today and I want to repeat this as well because I, I, I really think it's true. A championship is one if you can get really high points totally. We're, we're looking at the 90s. And when you look at the bottom teams, this is where really a lot of points can be made. And so the results up to, so if you can get the results against the bottom teams relatively consistently, the results up top don't matter as much anymore. And I think that is something that always has to thought about that uh, in order to win a league, it's more important how can you break down the smaller teams in this league. And the team that's most consistent there will most likely win that one. Although a head to head is always nice to have. Okay, short, quick Premier League review video. I am actually planning to do, not maybe not weekly, but bi weekly reviews of the matches. So, um, and you know, there's now a vacation coming as, as well. So it will probably take a little bit of time, but I surely follow this league with a whole lot of interest, I gotta say. In any case, please let me know who do you think will win the Premier League this season uh, or who do you see in the top four and who do you see get relegated. I think that's the most interesting parts. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and my take on the Premier League and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.